The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of our Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started from PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway. Grow video. I had a really odd feeling in there because these people just constantly were worshiping this man. We were reading over scripts and a lot of the scripts were Tyler Perry's works too just as well. It was like Tyler Perry worship going on in there and I just was not with it. y'all it's hariana and i'm back with another Ooh, hold up what is going on with this camera uh, is that better i think it is anyways <laughs> hey y'all it's hariana and i'm back with another video hi hello how are you doing my name is hariana and welcome to and welcome back to the pirate ship also known as harry hooks pirate ship i am the captain you are not my first bait i don't got no first bait because you want to know why bring your ear closer to the speaker so you can hear me clearly nobody's worthy of being the first bait but hi hello how are you doing my name is hariana and i like to make content based on nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all your issues that or within those spaces. Now, today's episode, why do I say episode as if I'm filming a TV show? I mean, <laughs> kind of, but I legit want to talk about Tyler Perry and so many of the ongoing thoughts and opinions I've been having about his work, especially recently with his newest film getting a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Mind you, Rotten Tomatoes often is not that great at times when it comes to rating certain movies and whatnot because they have like a certain group of critics that they use sometimes the people are really interested in the stuff sometimes they're rating things that they know nothing about like let's say they are rating a spongebob movie or a ninja turtles movie and they don't know shit jack whatever about either but it has a zero percent on ryan tomatoes it's the newest movie that he has with megan good in it and it has just sparked up so much more discussion surrounding his work and i am somebody that grew up watching a lot of Tyler Perry's productions. I used to be seated every week for House of Pain. I used to watch Meet the Browns. I still like having on from time to time would just be on in the background. I really enjoyed a lot of his 2000s films. I like some of his films from the early 2010s just as well but this is just something that I just been wanting to ponder upon because when I look back at his works from the 2000s and then I look at the shit that he's making now it's very much giving disappointment because back then in the past we sat here and were like okay there's some kinks here and there but we can work them out and seeing how the work has just gotten extremely messy and the only thing that has improved about it is the way it looks is concerning now before we go any further i feel like i need to explain why i look the way i do y'all it is maintenance day okay it is literally maintenance day and if you don't know what maintenance day is it's basically the day where you're taking care of all your beauty related stuff but i have just gotten really behind on youtube stuff this month um because i have went out of town for a convention and all of that depression ended up hitting me really really hard too just as well um yeah so today is maintenance day but i also wanted to get this video done also Tyler Perry is just not worth me, you know, silk pressing my hair and doing my makeup. Like, he's just not. So let's go ahead and begin and continue on. I have a list of notes that I jotted down on my phone that I want to discuss. So the first note that I have right here says, why were his 2000s films and TV shows better? And the reason I have down here is just that he took more time with them. Tyler Perry has been releasing projects back to back to back to back to back to back to back for like the last few years I say I don't even really say like the last few years I'll probably say like the last five years before the pandemic hit he was still releasing a lot of things quickly 
after 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 it was just so much stuff coming out but in the 2000s he still did have numerous projects come out in early in the early 2010s just as well but it's just there was a lot more effort put into these works like it was a lot more effort and it was a lot more care put into them just as well but also he wasn't the only person that was writing them like he actually had people helping him direct certain episodes of the shows and whatever he had someone else direct um diary of a mad black woman which is a movie that we are going to be discussing a lot more later on in this video because i feel as if diary of a mad black woman is tyler perry at his best but even then there is still so much to debunk about it and as i mentioned he had a television series called house of pain that ended up getting rebooted and when I say rebooted, I don't even think it got rebooted. I think it's just a continuation of the show that already was going on. But House of Pain basically is a series that focuses on the Pain family in Atlanta, Georgia, and they always in pain. Like that's basically the premise of it. House of Pain is not a perfect series, but it had an interesting enough storyline that kept you seated, okay? My ass used to be seated every week watching new episodes when I was in middle school okay it was giving soap opera it literally was a soap opera it was a black soap opera about a black family even though this series had tons and tons of issues with colorism and fat phobia but it had an interesting enough storyline and the cast was entertaining enough too just as well the old house of pain had charm I don't know what the actual hell is going on with House of Pain now. Like, what the fuck is that? It's just not good. It wasn't necessarily all that great to begin with, but you can tell that I was actual care put into the series back then. Now, it's this ongoing thing that so many people have noticed with Tyler Perry's recent works is that he's just trying to put out as much content as possible regardless of how the outcome is. It's reminding me a lot of this critique that plenty of people have had about Netflix because Netflix always has like an original coming out every week at this point. I remember back in the day it used to be seen as like a flex to have like a Netflix original but every other week there is something original and new coming out on Netflix and eight times out of ten it's usually mid or lackluster. Every now and then we'll get something that's actually pretty good like Do Revenge. Mind you a lot of these Tyler Perry movies be coming out on Netflix too just as well contributing to that problem and as I had mentioned that House of Pain wasn't necessarily a perfect series you could sit through it because it was entertaining the next note that I have here is talking about Diary of a Mad Black Woman I will sit here and tell you that while Diary of a Mad Black Woman be on some BS it's one of my favorite movies okay we are all allowed to have our own trash and i think that's what the discussion has been coming up lately about tyler perry because he feels as if we're critiquing his work too hard where it's just he's giving oh it's not that serious y'all are taking my work too seriously and like yes i get that we are all allowed to have our own trash and peace i get it i am literally somebody that has sat through miraculous ladybug i i know when it comes to trash content i get it but diary of mad black woman even though the movie isn't necessarily perfect, it had charm to it. It had an amazing cast, I would say that to a certain extent. But the main character, Kimberly Ellis, amazing. Medea wasn't necessarily as irritating as she ended up becoming later on down the line, but she actually felt important to the storyline. But Diary of a Mad Black Woman, I didn't even tell y'all what the movie was about. It's about a woman named Helen, played by Kimberly Ellis. I'm pretty sure that's Kimberly Ellis. Let me check. I've been getting a lot of black actors names mixed up. Yes, it is Kimberly Ellis. But the movie focuses on a woman named Helen and she is basically a woman of the black bourgeoisie. She's wealthy. She thinks everything is going well for her life. And then one day her husband throws her out the house. Like they live like in a wealthy mansion type thing. He throws her out the house, leaves her for another woman and she goes to live with her grandmother who is Medea. And it's just a journey of growth, her learning to love herself, learn her family, finding herself. It's a lot going on and I enjoyed every second of it. But as I mentioned, is the movie perfect? No, because while Tyler Perry is a black filmmaker and he tells black stories, 
a lot of the works have so many issues with anti-blackness within them because the movie mad colorist it's very colorist and people like brush off tyler perry's colorism often because it's directed towards black men but i was like no the, it's still colorist y'all fat phobia i mentioned that too is another big issue with tyler perry's works it's an issue with this movie too just as well and also the storytelling can start to get a bit frustrating and confusing because of the pace that the movie is moving at. But even then, Diary of a Mad Black Woman is one of Tyler Perry's best. And part of the reason why a lot of people don't necessarily give it as much shit as the stuff that he puts out now is because this was one of his first works. At this time period, this was when Tyler Perry was more so putting out the plays and whatever. Putting out the plays, putting on the plays, use correct terminology, girl. You were a third theater kid for a reason. But this was just like the beginning of his works. And we're like, yeah, there is room for improvement. There are things that can change over time. But now we're just like, why was your first thing the best thing that you have done so far? Because it wasn't necessarily just Diary of a Mad Black Woman. There's another movie that came out in the 2000s that I thought was one of his best, in my opinion, called The Family That Prays basically a movie about a black family religion has a lot to do with the film just as well which is also a very controversial topic when it comes to Tyler Perry that we will not really begin into because I'm just not in the mood to be like having people go off on me in my comment section about it everyone feels differently about religion and some of the comments that i have been getting lately about religion have just been making me uncomfortable so that's why i am gonna exclude that section from this video i'm pretty sure there is somebody else on youtube who has debunked a lot of the religious criticisms within Tyler Perry's works but I'm just not speaking about that here. Now I'd say that The Family That Prays was a bit of an improvement from Diary of a Mad Black Woman because there were issues that were fixed a lot with the writing. funny how Tyler Perry not even just Tyler Perry but just like the community in general like the black community is acting as if this is like a new thing of us discussing the problems with Tyler Perry's work and mainly the discussion with his work now focuses on the subject that the work is very lackluster but do I need to remind you all of the infamous boondocks episode that was literally banned from airing on Adult Swim for so long when Adult Swim got permission to finally air that Tyler Perry parody episode, oh, they played the hell out of it. I watch a lot of Adult Swim, okay? I know, they played that episode a lot. Do I think that episode of the Boondocks kind of took it a little bit too far? Yes. Carl Jones, I, because I personally do think that the Boondocks could have went too far sometimes. I think they did go a bit too far here with this Tyler Perry episode, but also a lot of what they were speaking about was very interesting to say. They did touch on a lot of the weird anti-blackness issues that are in Tyler Perry's works. There was more so focused on Tyler Perry's plays opposed to his films though. I do think they took it a little bit too far when it came to the subject of Tyler Perry's sexuality too just as well. But them critiquing Tyler Perry's works, oh it was very much spot on. <laughs> So this isn't necessarily a new thing. Black people have been having their problems with Tyler Perry for the longest. Just how black people have been having their issues with BET since 2006. And then there's one more thing in particular that I really want to talk about when it comes to just the entire Tyler Perry debate. Where we're sitting here and talking about his works from the early, early year, not early, but the early year stages of his career opposed to what it is now. Mind you that he's been writing plays and doing that shit for like a long time, okay? Tyler Perry has a rags to riches story and that is a contribution to this notion that people have about 
if you are critiquing Tyler Perry, you are jealous of him. And that is something that has been frustrating me for so long because I remember I was back in high school and I even said something about how Tyler Perry's work has problems and one of my classmates got mad at me. She was like, um, Tyler Perry is actually a well-established man. You're over here being mean and judgmental and yada, yada, yada. And I was just like, girl, this is a high school drama club. This is a high school drama club. Was, was it really necessary for you to come in here and just jump on me about that, about him? But this discussion often comes up when black people are just sitting here and just talking about the work that Tyler Perry makes. But also we can sit here and talk about how he's very exploitative too just as well because I know people who have worked on his productions. People who have done extra work, people who have been production assistants on his work and they said that the working conditions are literal shit. The working conditions are terrible. While yes they may be being fed well like, it's always known that if you work on the Tyler Perry production, the food is going to be good. Yes, I worked on a show before. I was an extra, by the way. It ain't nothing serious. But I worked on a show before, and it was filmed at Tyler Perry Studios. And the food was top tier. It was amazing. It was great. But I'm like, good food is not going to make up for the actual problems that we have here. That's literally like when the teacher used to throw y'all a pizza party. It's kind of like the equivalent of that. But people often bring up that if you say pretty much anything negative about Tyler Perry's works or the way he treats people and the way he treats black women in these projects just as well, they're often saying that you're trying to tear a black man down and you're hating. And it's not that. It's often not that. Is it that sometimes? Yes. I agree. I think there are some people that are jealous of Tyler Perry, but the people that are not sitting here joning on this man simply because he has money, this is not that. And this main problem I've noticed comes from like the black actor circle. And it is another reason why I have just fallen out of love with live action acting. For anybody that knows me, I was really trying hard in like when I was like from the ages of like 18 to 21 to break it in as a live action actor. I'm way more interested in doing voice acting now at this point. But in the acting community that I was a part of, and I'm not going to say the name of it because I'm pretty sure I still follow those people. I'm pretty sure a lot of those people still follow me and I don't want them thinking that this is just me taking a jab at them. But I went to this meetup that they had and they were just constantly praising Tyler Perry. The special guests that they would have at this meetup were actors that were in Tyler Perry's works and they would always speak such highly of him and how well he pays them and this and that third. Which yes, pay your workers well, but you need to treat your workers well too and actually give them great material to work with. I had a really odd feeling in there because these people just constantly were worshipping this man. We were reading over scripts and a lot of the scripts were Tyler Perry's works too just as well. It was like Tyler Perry worship going on in there and I just was not with it. I wasn't with it at all because I remember I was actually in a group chat with these people and I said something about how a fall from grace was like questionably bad and this one woman started going off about how amazing she thought the film was and I was just like all right but that was the thing you sat here and you're around this community of people that are just straight up worshiping this man because they feel as though he has done a lot for the sake of black filmmaking which I do think is true to a certain extent I'm not gonna hold y'all on that I do think Tyler Perry has done good things for the black community when it comes to acting and up until I'd say like the 2015 era, up until that point, I will give him his praise then. He often hired black actors. He hired a lot of dark skin actors too, just as well, because we know how the professional entertainment industry is very much colorist. I really do appreciate that he filmed a lot of his films in Atlanta and on the East Coast. It was giving people more of a chance to be able to get work outside of having to fly to LA or New York or all of that. Like I gave that man his praise when it was due when it came to the black community and entertainment but I'm like y'all sitting here writing it off as we're just jealous of him for simply saying that the work needs work it ain't it it ain't it and the way that the black community the black up-and-coming entertainment community just praises this man it's just too unsettling for me and I just had to remove myself from that space I feel like a lot of them just kind of want to be like the next Tyler Perry they want to be a black man that has all this money and just can make as many films as possible because I actually had a classmate that admired Tyler Perry like he has made some plays 
and they're just kind of like ripoffs of Tyler Perry's productions. I wasn't really necessarily a fan of them, but that work is not for me. Just how a lot of Tyler Perry's work isn't for me just as well. But Tyler Perry be talking down on his own audience. He treats his own actors like shit and i'm not even saying like he treats his own actors terribly i'm talking about like the people that were extras the stuff that i have heard from them the treatment needed work it's just concerning to me at this point because i'm like we sat here and watched his very humble beginnings we're seeing that he is just very much capitalist now at this point he's going to continue to keep making terrible movies and i think it is getting to this point where i have talked about this before on my channel especially in that video i talked about 20v1 and a lot of black humiliation content Part of the reason Tyler Perry keeps making stuff like this is because people just keep watching it. People just keep watching it. He's going to continue on making it. As much as we sit here and talk shit about his shows, people are still sitting there watching them. And guess what? Y'all know how y'all be sitting here hate watching? Hate watching is a contribution to why his bills keep getting paid. The man is very much well off. He's rich. He probably never has to work another freaking day in his life. But that's what frustrates me the most. Because I was like, you were at a point in your career where you can sit back, relax, and take the time to make better stuff. Because he hires very talented people to be in his films. Even though I have my opinions on Megan Good, especially with a lot of the shit she's been doing with Jonathan Majors lately, and honestly just before Jonathan Majors too. I think she's a very talented woman. I think she deserved a better film. Maya Coppola is the movie that Kelly Rowland was in and that was the last Tyler Perry film I had watched because it genuinely pissed me off because while the movie was visually stunning, it was actually horrible. Like there's one particular scene in the film. It's a sex scene that is between her and Mind you, her character is married in the movie, but she has a love interest in the movie. Basically, she's like sleeping with her client. The sex scene between her and her client is so beautifully shot. Like it's very artsy and all that, but it literally means nothing because the overall movie was shit. So I'm like, what does this even mean when you have few moments like this that actually look pretty good or you'll have the moments where the acting is amazing, the writing is sometimes good, but it low key doesn't mean anything when just the 90% of it, it's just awful. It's just awful. That movie pissed me off so bad. Like I gave it like a one star on Letterboxd. I legit was thinking about watching that Megan Good movie. But like at the same time, I'm just like, I think Tyler Perry just is getting to a point where he knows he's going to make bad stuff. He knows people are going to sit there and watch it. And then it's going to continue on. We're going to keep having this ongoing conversation. And I was like, I think we need to start bringing up how much better his earlier works were than the ones now. Because your work is supposed to improve as time goes on. What is going on? The only thing that has improved with Tyler Perry's works is the way it looks. And I find it sad. And we, we are not jealous of that man. We aren't. We, we just know he's capable of doing better. We know he's capable of making better stuff. I don't know. It just kind of feels like a slap in the face to his own community. Especially a lot of these actors I said that literally worship this man. They legit don't want to see any faults in his actions. It's, it's concerning. <laughs> That's pretty much all I gotta say. <laughs> That's it. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I need to go rinse this deep conditioner out of my hair and wipe this mask off my face. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go do that. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Um, Tyler Perry and Sam Levison uh, made my they ruined they both ruined my mood this week. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, night, whatever time of the day you chose to watch this. Uh, I'm just thankful that you watched it with the abs on. All right, thank you. Goodbye.